spread the tidings round wherever man is found the comforter has come the long long night is past the morning breaks at last
us a presence here today. I like that part where it's healing in his wings. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. Amen. That's a blessing to us to know that we have help and comfort in this hour of our need. We always have need of Christ, so we just thank the Lord that he's our all-surrounding presence that keeps us. Lo, I am with you, even unto the end. Amen. Thank the Lord. Well, bless the Lord. Amen. As we think on God's most holy word, we thank the Lord that he's with us and in us and that he's for us, that he's our help and comfort in and, and our, our stay in uh, matters of prayer requests. Well, first of all, I want to thank Brother Joe for the services of uh, last week and the, and the preaching thereof and keeping the word going, keep the, uh, the witness going. It takes us all to get the job done. Uh, those of us who uh, stand behind pulpits, you know, we have the lead responsibility, but it takes each and every uh, person in the family of faith to keep things going. We're all one of another. So uh, we thank the Lord for the witness gone out, and we thank the Lord for our fellowship with Brother Ron and Sister Pam who are with us today. Thank the Lord for blessing us as we're uh, gathered together. We thank the Lord for traveling mercies. Lord brought them here safely. They have a few miles to go, of course, in the uh, journey uh, out west and, and back. So we just pray for the Lord to be with Brother Ron, Sister Pam. And Sister Pam soldiering through things, but amen. amen. She uh, thanked the Lord for uh, the prayers of the saints that just helped strengthen her in Jesus' amen. name. So yeah. amen. All, also on matters of, of prayer, we want to pray along certainly for Sister Margo, who is up here on, on duty, but she does have an eye treatment coming up tomorrow. Uh, she'll have to, to take it easy for a little uh, while as a matter of eye pressure and all things involved, but we know the Lord's just going to bring her right on Thank through it, so we're, we're thankful for Amen. those who soldier through. Uh, as Sister Margo knows a lot about that, as Sister Rhonda knows a lot about that, so we thank the Lord. You know, uh, people who soldier through illnesses, they're heroes of faith, because they uh, through the trial through the tests that they go through, Amen. they perfect their faith and they lean not unto their own understanding but unto the Almighty God. And that, uh, that takes spiritual fortitude. So we're glad for those things in Jesus' name. Praying along with uh, Brother Dan and Sister Miriam certainly for Troy, Troy Hunter, uh, who has upcoming treatment. It's also a serious issue that needs to be dealt with. Uh, so we just uh, thank the Lord for uh, uh, Brother Troy. Just We know the Lord will guide him and, yeah. and keep him. So we thank, thank the Lord for his presence there. And uh, Sister Sherry, I, I don't know if she'll be here today, but uh, through prayer she had a good relief from some miseries that uh, she was undergoing yesterday. So I, so thank the Lord. Sister Rebecca York out in Missouri, remember to pray for her also in the care of her mother for Sister Ramona. Uh, up in years, has to have some go through re rehab therapy and, and so forth. So uh, they just need strength and Sister Rebecca's communicated with me about that. So we just wanna remember her and, and her mother in, in prayer. And uh, Brother Jim also in the matter of a brother-in-law who lost a daughter and for a friend, uh, just for prayer for a broken collarbone, was it Brother Jim? Broken yeah, ribs. yeah, for Tony. Tony, Tony yeah. was the name, so we just wanna uh, lend our prayers and just know that the Lord's leading and yeah. guiding. He gets us through, amen. amen. One day there'll be no more tears, there'll be Thank no more Lord. pain. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All these things that uh, surround us, they'll pass away. But the word of God, it abides forever. Amen. So we, so we thank just the thank Lord. the Lord. We thank the Lord that indeed there's healing in his wings. Amen. As we lift up the name of Jesus within our hearts. I'm going to call on Brother Bill, if he would. We're going to call on Brother Bill to open the service in prayer and just thank the Lord as we bless his holy name now and forevermore. Amen. Brother Bill. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for this day. Lord God, you gave us another breath to breathe. That's a miracle, Father God. And we want to use it in a way to praise your name. Yes. And thank you, Lord God, for your word that's true. 
Lord, it's, it's eternal, Lord God. And Lord Jesus Christ, all these prayer requests were brought up, Lord, before you. Lord, you said to bring them to you, Lord God, and to lay them down. So, Lord God, we lay each and every prayer request down before your feet, Father God. The burdens are too heavy for us to carry, but Lord God, we know you're able to do all things. You're able to do exceedingly and abundantly above, above all that we ask or think. Lord Jesus Christ, in the scripture we want to hang on to, Father God, is it, uh, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver us out of them all. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord God, for giving Brother Ron and Sister Pam traveling mercies, Lord Jesus, for the long journey they made. And Lord God, even for the traveling mercies for each and every one of us who are even local, Father, we thank you for all the traveling mercies today. We thank you, Lord God, for the fellowship in you, Father God, as Brother Joe brought out that our, par our prayers are eternal. Lord, they never fade away, Lord Jesus Christ. And we're thankful for that, Lord God. Lord, you're our rock, you're our refuge, you're our shelter in the time of storm, Father God. And we thank you, Lord God, for leading us through this life, Lord, on the earth, that, Lord, you'll be exalted and praised through each and everything we do, each and everything we say, each and everything we think. Lord God, you'll be exalted and praised and worship, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for Pastor Ryan today, Lord God, that you'll, you'll let, your, let your anointing rest upon him in a mighty way, anointing his lips, Father God, that your word comes forth as a two-edged sword, Father God. And Lord Jesus Christ, give him the strength and the ability, Lord God, and the encouragement and the uplifting to bring forth the messages today, Father God, especially this morning. And Lord God, we just pray that you'll inhabit the praises this morning. Lord God, Lord Jesus Christ, that we can sing unto you, Lord Jesus Christ, and give you praise and worship as your most worthy, Lord Jesus Christ. In your name, be with the remainder of the service. And we give you all the glory, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Well, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Let's just praise him, shall we? Amen. Let's just praise the Lord. So keeping that in heart and mind, let's sing and shout praises, shall we? Amen. Amen. Sing and shout. Thank the Lord. <laughs> We're, We're going to sing and shout praises for he alone is king. We're going to sing and shout praises enough to make 
itself. It just goes on and on in Jesus' name. Thank the Lord. Bless his holy name. Bless him this day. Amen. For his praises ring eternal within our hearts, within our spirits. All that is within me, let it praise the Lord of hosts. Amen. Thank you, Father. Blessed Lord. Amen. Well, bless the Lord. You may be seated at this time. Your brother Bill comes forward with the songs that just lift up our spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Bill. God bless Brother Ryan. God bless everyone this morning. We'll get right into the selections. And Brother Kevin will sing for us, Come In. Jesus stood there holding the door wide open he knew i would come to him from this storm he knew the sins and the burdens i bore he called to me son Come into the shelter, come in and lay all those burdens down. I am the shelter in 
the midst of the storm. I'm the door to the refuge where you enter in. I will clothe you and feed you and bind up your wounds. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. As the Lord did for us, we must do for others. We will stand there in prayer. Watching and waiting, there is someone out in that raging storm. When you see them, you shine your beacon and call. Come in, for he cares for you. of this storm I'm the door to the refuge where you enter in I will clothe you and feed you and bind up your wounds I'm the way the truth and the light I am the shelter in the midst of this storm I'm the door to the refuge where you enter in I will clothe you and feed you and bind up your wound. I'm the way, the truth, and the light. I'm the way, the truth, and the light. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Amen. God bless you, Brother Kevin, Sister Miriam, for our next selection, Sister Carol, Sister Patty, and Sister Margo will sing for us, Laying It Down. laying on my back too sick to even care there was pain and there was suffering it seemed too great to bear then I thought about the cross when Jesus bore those stripes when love came down from heaven and brought to me new life so I'm laying it down at the cross of Calvary I've laid it all down all the pain and misery from every problem every burden Jesus set me free so I'm laying it down cause he laid it down for me meditating and praying to get out of the flesh in a realm of the spirit no precious fear or stress jesus had my full attention i was ready to hear he told me what to do he made it very clear so i'm laying it down at the cross of calvary I've laid it all down, 
all the pain and the misery from every problem, every burden. Jesus set me free, so I'm laying it down, cause he laid it down for me. Well, Satan really wants you to carry it in your mind. All the condemnation and burdens he can find. So when he comes around, just, just repeat this little phrase. I'm gonna lay it all down. It puts the devil in a daze. So I'm laying it down at the cross of Calvary. I laid it all down, all the pain and misery from every problem, every burden. Jesus sets me free, so I'm laying it down, cause he laid it down for me. Now all sickness and affliction was affected by the cross. So there's nothing that's too hard, no suffering and no loss. Every stripe that he bore, every agony he cried, means a victory over death, eternal life for you and I. So I'm laying it down at the cross of Calvary. I laid it all down, all the pain and the misery from every problem, every burden. Jesus set me free, so I'm laying it down, cause he laid it down for me. So I'm laying it down at the cross of Calvary. I laid it all down, all the pain and misery from every problem, every burden. Jesus sets me free, so I'm laying it down, cause he laid it down for me. God bless you, sisters. Good messages in every song and chorus we sing. Amen. And all praise to God Almighty. Amen. God bless you, Sister Rome, on the piano. Amen. For our next selection, uh, Brother Kevin, Brother Orville, and myself will sing, Heaven Came Down. So quickly was made when 
as a sinner I came. Took of the offer of grace, he did proper, he saved me, all praise his dear name. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, my sins were washed away and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Now I have a hope that will surely endure after the passing of time. I have a future in heaven for sure, there in those mansions sublime. And it's because of that wonderful day When at the cross I believe Riches eternal and blessings eternal From His precious hand I receive Heaven came down and glory filled my soul When at the cross the Savior made away and my night was turned to day heaven came down and glory filled my soul heaven came down and glory filled my soul thank the Lord amen thank amen God bless you, brothers and sister Miriam. For our next selection, we have a group special just over in the glory land. Amen. And if you want to look on, it's on page 212 in the green book. Thank the Lord. Anyone's welcome sing? to come up and sing that wants to sing this. You can help sing. Definitely Ron and I sister got Pam. I'm a home free man, where the saints are. 
No, I always wanted to be in a band. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters, and Sister Pam and Brother Ron for joining in with us also. God bless you. Amen. For our next selection, Sister Margo will sing for us, Woe to the Pastors. I've not sent thee prophets, yet thou ran. I've not spoken to thee prophets, yet thou prophesied. You scattered my flock and have driven them away. Therefore, my judgment falls on thee this day. Woe to the pastors that destroy my sheep. I am against the prophets that steal my words. Is not my word like as a fire? I am against the prophets. Tell thy dreams. What is the chaff to the wheat? Woe to the pastors that scatter my sheep. Can any hide himself that I can't see? Am I not a God at hand? Who has heard and perceived my word? From the prophets has profaneness gone into the land. Woe to the pastors that destroy my sheep. I will gather the remnant of my flock. I will set up shepherds over them. A king shall reign and prosper in the earth, and he shall execute judgment and justice. He shall be called the Lord, our righteousness. Yes, he shall be called the Lord, our righteousness. God bless you, Sister Margo. For our last selection, we will have a group special. Anyone who wants to come up and sing can sing it. In the city where the Lamb is the light. Thank you. 
Bless your brothers and sisters. We'll all, we'll all stand before Pastor Ryan comes to bring forth the word of truth unto us. If you would follow along, it's in page 106 in the blue book. Loud enough to wake the dead. <laughs> Saints, aren't you excited? The hour is drawing nigh. When we'll all see Jesus and be caught up in the sky. We see the signs around us. It could be today. We know the bridegroom's coming.
Amen. Well, all we're doing today is making the rafters ring and shouting amen loud enough to wake the dead in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank the Lord for the resurrection power that comes through the faith of Jesus Christ. As we bow our heads in reverent prayer, seek unto our God, as Sister Miriam plays through, let's just thank him for his eternal presence. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for the vision that unites heart and spirit together, Father, and reaches up to a higher level in Jesus' name. Glorious things are spoken of thee, O city of God. Amen. Through the faith that's established from above, as we get the vision of it, as we catch the leading of the Spirit, Father, just praying always that the seed of faith that you've implanted within will bear fruit and spring forth, Father, and bring to us the knowledge that comes from above, the knowledge that sustains us in Jesus' name. So may the meditations of our heart and our thoughts be found acceptable within you this day, O eternal Savior. Father, bless each and every one of these faithful hearers and doers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Well, glory to God. Amen. Bless the Lord on high. Thank the Lord for all present. So brothers and sisters make their way out. You may be seated. Well, blessed Lord, good to be gathered in his name. Thank the Lord. It's a wonderful thing to express what's uh, within the heart. God made us as living, expressive beings. Amen. God felt the desire to do such a thing himself, which is why we're all here. As God's thoughts were expressed in the beginning when he created the heavens and the earth, and he said, let there be light, and then there was. And there is light and life in Jesus' name, for which we're ever grateful. As he's called us out of the darkness of non-existence and into his glorious light. Because here, here we are in Jesus' name. We live, we have breath, and in him we live and move and we have our being. So bless the holy name of Jesus as we ascribe greatness to our God, giving him all the glory. As we lift up holy hands without wrath or doubt and thank the Lord. I'm learning more about lifting up hands. Amen. You know, it's, it's a V for victory, right? So when you lift up hands, you're, and it's also this, you're reaching up to a higher power because God's above and we're here below, so you're doing that. At the same time where it's a V for victory, it's also surrender. It's a sign of surrender to the Almighty God. Amen. Amen. And... Uh, it's also a symbol of the tree of life, if you look at it that way, amen. I'm branching out here right now. I'm making like a tree, and uh, amen, <laughs> and uh, putting forth leaves in Jesus' name, just like the tree of life there in the book of Revelation with its healing leaves. So amen. So the things that we do in every faithful amen and in all our actions, it has, has great meaning in the Lord. And there's... There's always more to know about that in Jesus' name. So Amen. thank the Lord that we keep the worship channel of praise open. The prayer and preaching that the Lord set in place to be in touch with him you, as that faith frequency gets us tuned into the station, amen, of his holiness. What, what are the call letters of that station? Station W-O-R-D in Jesus' name, amen. Thank the Lord. So when you worship and you praise God, you know something? You're actually worshiping the spirit of truth itself. And the holiness of pure, unadulterated truth. But it's more than just a worshiping a concept because truth has life to it. It has a soul within it. How do I know that? Well, because I'm here. Uh, because you're here with, uh, with me today. Amen. We have life. And in him we live and move and have our being. And there wouldn't be any life and existence and thought without an I am power at work. So that ever-present, always-existent life of truth, we refer to it as God. That's who he is. 
The spirit of truth that St. John chapter 14, verse 17 proclaims him to be. Through that spirit, amen, we worship, we thank the Lord for the gift of life we've been given. And though the world at large may not be able to receive it, <clears throat> there's great comfort that comes to those in whom God is allowed to dwell, to let him in. Amen. amen. So uh, that, in that part, you know, it's always a matter of choice. What will we do with this Jesus whom we name as Christ? But the God who must be worshipped in spirit and truth, well, he's the one that gave us all the breath of life. And that's a miracle. And he alone is worthy to be praised in the sense of worship. In subject matter, I started this a couple weeks ago, it would be our subject, but we're keeping an eye on the end time. Uh, so this would be part three by number. And, uh, Lord willing, next week speak under the same title, but thank the Lord, whatever subject title we preach about, it's always about Christ, it's always about his life within us, but we're keeping an eye on the end time because the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. As Revelation 19.10 gives forth the angel witness, so these things have to be spoken of in order to let life live within us. We need things to look forward to. That's a common need. Uh, you know, in the natural world, you know, a person throughout the work week, what do they do? They look forward to the weekend. Well, in Jesus' name, we're looking forward to eternity, and these Amen. things keep us going, amen, as we seek the great things of prophecy in order to be awake, alive, and aware of everything that's written, which is an awesome responsibility. Uh, because every faithful hearer and doer of the word wants to be part of the most important thing that's ever done. What witness we have for in Christ, whether it's myself or anyone else, no matter what station of life, whether a person has famous and a household name, or, or what, the, the most important thing that anyone can do is to serve the Lord with all their heart. It's the most important thing. And we all want to be within his will and have our beliefs justified. Certainly I do. But the promises are set before us as we learn of him. And they're always yea and amen. And prophecy is always there as it brings itself to pass. And it's uh, the Lord's responsibility to do those things. And he'll do the right thing. He'll bring his word to pass. That's proof of his omnipresence and his omnipotence. And we uh, thank the Lord that the uh, Lord's always holy in his truth. And the effect and the level of uh, those written judgments of the plan of the ages, everything that's written in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, right on down the line, book of Revelation, or in the book of Revelation of the Old Testament, which is Daniel, and all, and all points in between, all those things are bringing it to the ending of this plan of glory. And then what happens? Well, thank the Lord. God knows, amen, what is to come. But his glory will be revealed. Hasn't even entered into the heart of man yet of all the things that God has prepared. But you do know he's preparing them. And when you get a vision of the new Jerusalem come down, the city four square, well, you're looking ahead to things, amen. You're looking ahead in Jesus' name. So amen. And knowing that the responsibility, it's our responsibility to say amen and seek the Lord. But the, the bringing forth of every matter of prophecy, the government is upon his shoulder. That's the Lord's responsibility. So the last thing that I have to worry about is, oh my goodness, I got to help out God, you know. Uh, get all, how's he going to get all this stuff done? The Lord will make it true. Amen. His word is promised. It's yea and amen. We're here to agree with it and do our part to, to advance and be soldiers of the cross and in all those things, we have our place in it. God's given us a place in all his fulfillment, but the ultimate responsibility is for the Lord to be true. God has to make his word true. That's, that's the responsibility of all responsibilities, and that rests upon his shoulders. And the word is this, station W-O-R-D. That, that station, that word is forever settled in heaven. And if it's written and if it's inspired of the Almighty God, it will stand. And for the time being, we thank the Lord, we seek and we find, we search uh, for the blessings of the Lord. 
But it's true that we see through a glass darkly to all that is prophetic. We know in part, we prophesy in part. Our knowledge is partial. But he, know, he who knows all things is with us. And if the Lord's for us, amen, thank the Lord, it'll stand. We may not understand every facet of fulfillment until all's completed, uh, as it was when the apostles. They understood so little about the resurrection, even though in hindsight, in 2,000-year-old hindsight, it seems so plain to us now of what Jesus was speaking about. But there was so much misunderstanding at the time. But then when the resurrection was accomplished, oh my, that brought it all together. And the 12, amen, down to 11 for momentarily, Matthias filled out the complement of the 12 apostles afterwards. But uh, they became the faith force of all time and spread the gospel throughout. And more and more, and and I've said it quite a few times now, but more and more I'm convinced that the voice of the Lord that's upon the waters, it's there in Psalms chapter 29, which will reference to part of Psalms 29 upcoming here. But the sound of God's voice that thunders in Revelation 10 and verse 3, the voice of the Lord will be necessary to answer all questions, you know, matters of doctrine, theological questions, or in what I think is more likely, the putting aside of all questions, because when the thunder of God's voice is speaking, well, who's got time for anything else? Amen. Thank the Lord. So bless the Lord. So the Lord will settle the issues. The word's forever settled in heaven. We need to love one another and make our way toward that moment. And, and within all those things, uh, underscore this, the looking for the signs of the times is certainly vital. It most certainly is. That's part of our responsibility. In order to give God a people to hear what the Spirit says to the churches, because he's speaking and he's saying a lot. So uh, within all those things, we worship the Almighty God. And we need some help along the way so that the content of the heart, the intent of the person within, it'll reach the level of understanding that we contend for. And there are helps and aids within God's word, of course, uh, with the continuation of revelatory knowledge, amen, that's written within to get us to that place, place rather. Uh, And all that considered, there are some things I believe I can offer as to the matter of translation faith, which are these, as the very faith of Jesus will be needed for rapture, even though the word rapture is not contained in Scripture, but it describes that being taken up, that translation faith. I believe it will take not just human faith in God, but the very faith of Jesus that said, let there be. It will take that. The voice of the Lord will do just that. And just in general terms, the seventh seal and seven thunders will do this. I've got seven points to make concerning that issue. I believe it'll do this. It'll shorten the days of tribulation. In some way, within the timeline given, God, there's a way and God will bring it about. Also that it'll bring, a, once again, rapturing faith. Something so strong, we just can't stay here anymore. It'll lift us up in Jesus' name. In accordance with that, uh, I have scripture uh, that will have much to do when we come to Psalms 29. Our first scripture will be out of St. John chapter 1. But it'll bring something so strong that it'll just lift us up. Something so vital. And in accordance with that, the Lord will give strength of a kind that only in biblical history and history in general for that matter, that only Enoch and Elijah had, who were translated, save for the Lord himself, who ascended up on high off the, off the mountain. Uh, following his resurrection, then he was ascended on high. But uh, for Enoch and Elijah, besides that example, Enoch and Elijah were the only two that had that. And the thunder of God's voice, just in very general terms, it will also do this. It will defeat the enemy's deception. 
because the scripture says the very elect would be deceived if such a thing were possible. That's how close it comes. That's the dangers that are in uh, this day and age. As deception, that's the first thing spoken of by Jesus in Matthew 24 in the signs of the times. And, and of course, the voice of God will do this. It'll put the finishing touch to the scripture and it, it'll split the eastern sky and then I'll see this. Ten thousands of his saints coming with him. For the time and day of the Lord is accomplished. Amen. And so, okay, as promised, St. John chapter 1. We're going to start at verse 10. So those are the things that I can offer. Along with this, it, it, it'll shake the world to the core. These things will shake the world. It, it'll shake the very foundations, governmental powers, economic powers, religious powers. It'll shake all that. And it'll reveal secrets. It'll lay the enemy's plans bare because God has a secret plan. Well, and things that he'll reveal, well, that's to counter what the devil has. He has his plan. And all, all those things, to win the greatest victory and to overcome by the word of God, you fight the greatest battle. So those are some of the thoughts I can offer to the revealed knowledge of what John saw there upon the Isle of Patmos, but he was not allowed to write about. But that which is written and that which is received by he who made the world itself, as we'll find example of that here in St. John chapter 1, who is Christ, they're made by God to become children and sons unto him. So in St. John chapter 1 and from verse 10, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And then John bare witness. He was before me. In terms of age, of course, John the uh, Baptist was uh, six months of, of physical age older, but he was before me. The eternal one was before all things, amen. The only manifestation of God that came to us through a body of flesh. So grace and truth walk together, just as righteousness and peace have kissed one another in the expressions of Psalms 85 and verse 10, by the mercy that endures forever. All things are come to us in Christ. And uh, being written out and recorded uh, in his later years, kind of written as a memoir, the other Gospels are written in a, uh, a, John writes in a little bit different form, doesn't use the parables, but it's written as kind of a memoir, uh, a personal memory of what things that Jesus said and did. So John the Apostle, Revelator, he's the one who will hear and has heard by this time the seven uttered voices of God that he was not allowed to write about. But everything is interconnected. All these things work together. Uh, and of the voices of God that Revelation 10:3 John uh, contained, John was not allowed to write of. He was allowed to describe the setting, and he did see something. Did what that was, we don't know. But it, but just the fact that God revealed that much and showed him just a little glimpse of glory, that's enough for the time being to let us know that there are things prepared. So he and John himself, he was being prepared to be a chosen vessel for the call to discipleship. So as to some of the effects of, of the voice of God and the voice of thunder, I believe that we can rightly say they're in Matthew 24, but not the content in any discernible way. But we do know this, the Revelation River hasn't stopped yet. It's flowing out from the throne of God, from Revelation 22 and verse 1. So thank the Lord. God will reveal. He keeps us looking forward. He has much to say yet. God will speak. 
which, uh, and, and that looking forward, it's so necessary that it has to be there. It keeps us from the spirit of Laodicea because the spirit of Laodicea is this, I'm rich and increased with goods. I know it all, I have everything, I have no need of anything. So God keeps us looking forward. There are things that we need yet. And the, we talk about the things that we do have and we're blessed thereby, but we're reaching out for more. The human spirit has a, a need for fresh manna. It, it's just there. You have to have it, so amen. And then when all things are accomplished, we'll have more to see on the other side of glory. So God keeps us looking ahead in an eternal way. And it, it takes the power of God's voice to bring all these things together. And we seek that, we seek that. We seek to be ready for the call and, and hear the voice that will instruct and lead and guide until the church is called up. And that, because that, that's power, oh my. The lifting up power, that's power of an incorruptible nature. In, in this world, power corrupts. But this is the type of power that's loud enough to wake the dead. It'll get you up there in Jesus' name. Power of that need and power of that sort, it will be delivered in Jesus' name. In, in Psalms 29, the aforementioned Psalms 29, I refer to it a lot, I lean upon it a lot. As the voice of God is so very powerful in Psalms 29. Now I'm going to read the first portion and the last portion of Psalms 29, but since I'm there, and I got there on purpose, amen, thank the Lord. It's uh, precious here. There are seven voices of God given within Psalms 29 that starts at verse 3. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. First voice, and there are seven voices that go on down. What can we say about them? They're foundational. They're foundational. There's always found, everything that Jesus said, everything that's written in the New Testament has foundations in the Old Testament, so they're foundational only. You can't figure out by intellect uh, what the voices of God said to John that he was not allowed to write of. If you could do that, the devil would have figured out that formula a long time ago. He's wiser than Daniel, as Ezekiel the prophet said in his writings. So, amen. But the voices are there, foundationally only. After the voice of the Lord is upon many waters. All right. So now to the giving of ability to spiritual strength and power is affecting translation faith. Psalms 29 from the first verse. Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. And where does all our might come from? Comes from above. But that which is planted within, that we develop, that we seek for, give him the praise. Give God the glory. Give that unto him. Give unto the Lord, at verse 2, the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. How do you worship the Lord? You do it in the beauty of holiness, the beauty of the truth that he is. And then seven voices thundering here they, uh, on the, upon the waters. Just refer to them briefly. There's power there. There's majesty there's the breaking of powers. There's the dividing of the flames. It's a storm analogy. Like God, he divides the flames. Like in modern English, we would call it lightning. But that's the, the analogy to the voice of God. It does that. It shakes the wilderness. And then it brings to the birth and it reveals everything. It lays the forest bare. Discovers all secrets. Answers all questions. As... Uh, I'm somewhat of a, on a personal mission to proclaim Psalms 29 as the foundation of the seven thunders of Revelation 10.3, but my purpose for today is to concentrate on the praise and the glory that comes that we just read about, the giving of strength that surrounds those thunderings as a product and as a result of what is so very profound and loud, but I draw attention to it as a witness. Uh, everything written in the New Testament, it's, it's founded, it's in the law, it's in the prophets, it's in the wisdom literature, the Psalms, the Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. It's uh, within the, the five books of Moses and within the prophets, Isaiah, Daniel, and uh, Ezekiel, and on to the minor prophets, Samuel, of course, in uh, First and Second Samuel. All these things 
lead to Christ and the cross, and they lead to his promised return. So here in Psalms 29, we account the Lord as able and that he is worthy, and we place no limits upon the Holy One of Israel. Our faith places no limits. Our entire faith is based on raising one up from the dead, and that's for a reason, because right away you gotta believe that something is just unlimited. It's the greatest healing of all time. If you get healed of death, boy, are you ever healed. <laughs> Amen. When Jesus said, come forth, and Lazarus came out of there, what a healing that was. There will be nothing impossible in the Almighty God. Place no limits. That was the fault of the Exodus generation, right? Even though they saw the visible miracles, they put limits on the Almighty God, which did not serve them well. But the, <clears throat> that God is able, that's so vital to the precept because he's able to do exceedingly abundantly yeah. above all we ask and think. So our strength given is that of agreement. And without agreement of worship and praise, well, how would God fulfill all things? It's his desire to give us life and then uh, allow us the expression to become part of that remnant seed of faith. And they who worship God, they must worship for this reason, that the glory is due him owing to the beauty of his holiness and out of his love unfeigned. And when I say that, I'm aware the Bible is the most criticized book. You can go online. If you want to find criticisms of the Bible, there's a world of it out there. Uh, but the, where understanding is lacking. But when you put it all together, it's, it's just as the voice out of the whirlwind said to Job, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Yeah. When I laid the measures thereof, because God measures things out. Is it any wonder that Jesus was raised as a carpenter's son? He's been measuring things out since the beginning. He put the line, stretched out the measuring line upon the heavens and the earth, stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and here we are. Here we are, right in the middle of all of God's purpose. And at one time, mankind thought Earth was the center of the universe. Well, the physical universe, not so. But the spiritual universe, oh, you're in the middle of everything that God's doing this day. You're right smack dab center of the eternal purpose of Almighty God. So never think you're insignificant or that you're not important. You're the reason that all the heavens and the Earth was created in Jesus' name, in order to bring forth life, in order that God could be a father, express himself that way, and lead many sons to glory, and show them greater love, which Christ did upon the cross. So we thank the Lord. So our strength it <clears throat> comes from above, and the glory is, is due him. And his, his holiness, it has to be worshiped out of love unfeigned. Holiness can be defined as the keeping of eternal and absolute truth. For God is true. That's what makes him holy. He, for he was and he is and he is to come. That makes him holy, holy, holy. That makes him Lord God Almighty. And we worship him in the spirit of that truth. So we keep an eye on the end time. This is how we do it. We give the Lord glory. When you're, when you're praise and when you look unto the Lord to be your help, that's what you're doing. You're looking to the end, even though you might not specifically be thinking about prophetic things at that moment, it, that's what it does. It narrows your focus. It gets your eyes set upon he who is worthy to be praised in sense of worship. That belongs to him alone. You can always praise somebody in the sense of giving them a compliment or credit for something. But praise of worship goes to... God alone. Amen. And that's how we pass the test, by looking to the testimony of Jesus as it's foreordained and written by the one who sits astride the boundaries of time, who knows no limits. He's not limited by space. And after the perfected work number of seven comes about, in, with, we're still within Psalms 29 because we're going to drop down and read verses 10 and 11. But in between come God's thunderings. And what's the outcome of that? Here, the thunderings and the voice of God, it gives strength. We give our strength of praise unto God 
And we get strength in return. Amen. The investment, the investment we make in Christ, it always has benefit. And at the ending of Psalms 29, it says, The Lord sitteth upon the flood, and he's there, upon the flood tide of events upon, uh, that come about this world. God is there. He's over all things. Yea, the Lord sitteth king forever. The Lord will give strength unto his people. It starts with us giving him strength and giving him credit for the glory that is due him. And then what's he give us back? The Lord will give, he'll give us his voice. He'll give us the strength of his voice. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Oh, Lord. That he'll bless us with the peace that passes all understanding. So before and after the voices, it's the accounting of strength and it's the giving of strength. What's God done for me lately? He's given me strength from on high. He's given me strength to endure it all. So know this, the God, giving of God to give him the glory, it has real spiritual weight to it. We get back what we put into this gospel and, and so much more. And so much more. We get the blessings uh, times eternity. What are, what is, you're getting gifts that are of eternal blessing in Jesus' name. So praise and worship, oh, it does so much. It, God, it give praise, here's what it does. It gives God a place to live within your heart. Amen. And I mean literally, not just, I mean figuratively, sure. But it literally does that because God is the spirit of truth. That, that's not physical. That's non-material. It doesn't exist on a, the terrestrial plane or it doesn't uh, consist of terrestrial things. It's invisible. It's pure wisdom, which has no substance, no physical qualities to it. So, and, and praises don't have any, when you speak them, uh, they're not physical either. So God lives in those praises Amen. in all actuality. He's, he's happy to live in praises. That's what he is. He, he's the soul of praise. He's the soul of truth. So when God inhabits your praises, he's right at home in your praises. He doesn't need physical things to sub, subsist or to exist. Amen. God is actual in all actual terms in your praises. He lives there. He's right at home when his saints praise his name. So uh, thank the Lord. So to be part of that, it's the best thing you can ever do. It'll make you live. So give God the glory for the right reasons, for the beauty of his holiness. Having no guile, like Nathaniel of St. John chapter 1, we read from the first portion of St. John 1, uh, the Example of Nathaniel comes a bit later and finishes out the chapter. But he had no ulterior motives. Blessed in the man in whose spirit there is no guile. And Nathaniel was one of those. So the Lord will keep the order of prophetic truth. There's an outline to it here in Psalms 29 as to effect. We're just here to walk to it. Walk in step with it. To be agreed together. And if you're in harmony with the content and the intent, such as those singers of Revelation 14 and verse 3. If you're in, in harmony, those harpers that are harping with their harps, if you're in harmony with that, you'll be in the right place when the signs of the times play themselves out. When it's promised that not, in, in King James terminology, not one jot or tittle will pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Uh, jot referring to the letter Yod in the Hebrew alphabet, smallest letter, and then the strokes of the letters, like you put the straight strokes on the letter E to finish it out, just those little strokes, uh, all to the smallest letter, the smallest stroke of the pen, the word will be delivered. And you'll receive this kind of strength. Now that is something to look forward to, that to receive the power of his name. God's voice it gives strength, for his presence is near. He's going to get near to us. We draw nigh to him, he gets near to us. His word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. 
How did the woman who reached out from the press of the crowd touch the hem of his garment, get healed? She got near to the Lord. Now the Lord was passing by and obviously that was a very special moment. But you can reach out and touch the hem of his garment by faith that reaches across time and space. space uh, it no, faith knows no dimension. Just like truth knows no dimension. God's voice, it is near. Let's turn back to Joshua. Book of Joshua in chapter 10. As all prophetic promises are, are given to bring things to a mighty conclusion. Uh, again, there are no victories without battles. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the greatest of all battles brings about the greatest of all victories. Now, this is quite a battle and quite a victory that we'll read of here in Joshua chapter 10. As the timeline <clears throat> and purpose of the ages must be kept, but God has set in place a way that stays true to his promise that can even do this, if necessary. Remember, I'll shorten the days. Uh, we'll... Uh, Otherwise, no flesh should be saved in Matthew 24, that which is our following scripture. All right, for the time being, we're referencing that, but we're looking directly at Joshua chapter 10. We'll read from verse 12, but it can even do this. According to the need and according to the desperate need of the hour, it can even alter the course of time itself, as time is relative in the physical universe and, and can be changed according to need, and there will be need such as it was in the days of Joshua, and the surrounding circumstance was a battle against the Amorite kings as they were coming into the land, and they put them to flight. And then here at Joshua 10, verse 12, <clears throat> Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel, and he said in the sight of Israel, Son, Stand, S-U-N, talking to the luminary body in the daytime sky. Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon. Now that's the speaking of faith right there. I'm going to tell you something. Gibeon there in the midst of the Canaanite lands, uh, not too far from Jerusalem, a little bit north of there, the, uh, the physical place. All right. Stand thou still upon Gibeon. And thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. Right there in that area. What happened? The sun stood still. And the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. It's not this written in the book of Jasher. There are many books that are not accounted in our scripture. They'd be interesting to have, but not necessarily divinely Inspired. It wasn't necessary for him to be part of the biblical book, but nonetheless, is that not written? All right, so the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. The gospel of no limits. The suspension of natural laws, or even time itself, if that's what happened here. But all those things, whether it's some suspension of physical laws, or time itself, it's a miracle. I wonder about at the coming. I see the Lord coming with ten thousands of his saints. I wonder if it will be a day just like that. Uh, it's the, for the Lord to decide those things. But this is the lengthening of time to make it possible to fully defeat the enemy. Possibly the, might possibly have well been the day before the Sabbath uh, when no work or fighting certainly wasn't allowed on the Sabbath. Uh, so they needed the battle to continue until the, uh, the Sabbath day was uh, uh, to make sure that uh, they didn't come upon the Sabbath day. So, amen. So there are a lot of lessons we can learn in here. One thing we can learn about this instance is spiritually, we need more light. We need more light to fight the battle. We're always in need of that. Amen. 
So it speaks to those things. And, and, and as to what happened there and the miracle of the Lord, you know, there's a lot of theories, a lot of explanations that have been undertaken to determine what this, what and how this was done. But faith just simply says this, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. There was a need for it and God did it. And what, of course, what we call miracles, that's just the normal state of things of the Almighty God. That's what he does. God does miracles. The, this is just, this is who he is. He's a God of miracles, amen. So thank the Lord. So we can rightly be impressed by this. I think we should be, I am. But the miracles are the normal state of being to the Almighty God. He's a creator of miracles. He's a creator of all the things that are brought forth. He's the Almighty God in whom nothing is impossible. And since a day to the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as a day, even the suspension of time itself becomes possible. However the Lord did it, he did do it. And that we know. And we don't limit the Almighty God. If it was done by some other means, you know, bending light and, and uh, optics, if it was done some way, but so be it, God is light. He's the light that powers the, hev the new heavens and the new earth, amen, where there's no more need for sun or moon. However God did it, it's miraculous, and it was done by the faith of Jesus, and faith called it forth in the hour of absolute need, right when there was a need for it. God knows the manner of it. So, we, so by faith, we can say it was done by the faith of Jesus. It was done in that way, and things came forth, and miracles ensued. All right, in Matthew 24, the great prophetic chapter of Matthew 24, and it was, always was Christ. That's 1 Corinthians 10, 4, as Paul related. Even in the Exodus time, 1 Corinthians 10, 4, the spiritual rocket always was Christ. He was before me, as John the Baptist said. Christ was always in the mind of Jehovah God, El Shaddai, waiting to be expressed in order to glorify the name of God. All right, now we're talking about timing. In the days of Joshua, we just read, the day had to be extended. Light had to be extended. So it was, and the time was lengthened. Now here in Matthew 24, the need is different, but it's related to time. But to, in all, whether you need more light uh, or you need more time, whatever the case may be, it's always the same voice that brings the victory to us in Jesus' name. And in Matthew 24, verse 21, For then shall be great tribulation, such as is written in the scriptures surrounding, preceding, and following uh, the verses of our reading here in verse 21. There should be great tribulation, so it's a time of need, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Will there be a need for God's voice? Will there be a need for miracles in that day? The need of the day will bring it forth. And except those days should be short, and there should be no flesh saved, all right? We had... We had a need for the day to be lengthened in Joshua. Now we have a need for the days to be shortened. Otherwise, no flesh would be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Now, I see that as direct evidence of the voice of God, not as to content. That's unknown. That's for the Lord to decide. And he'll do so in the manner that he chooses. But I do believe it is an effect of what the voice of God says directly. And that ripple effect goes in all directions. You throw a rock in the middle of a pond, the ripples, it'll do a lot of things. It'll reach to every shore. The voice of God will have many effects. And in our eye on the end time, uh, this coming as you read along with the chapters, there's a general progression and a timeline there. God keeps the order of things. And he'll keep a hold of his word. He keeps the books. He knows the timing of things. But it's within the scriptures that are 
closely linked to the seven vials of wrath, closely linked to the 70th week of Daniel. But there's so much happening all at once in all these judgments. You get it in compact form here in Matthew 24. But all these judgments crashing, colliding together, uh, so much overlap of effect that it becomes necessary uh, amongst the days of to and fro and in the day of battle, it becomes necessary to shorten the days. So uh, uh, in the order of scripture, I spoke to it in part two under this uh, sermon. We spoke to it many times over our history from Brother Jack and myself and the brothers who have given witness uh, through the preaching and so forth. So we look for the signs of the times, and you know, you have to make it plain. I have no special knowledge as to the day nor the hour. No man knows that. The content of what God's thundering voice says, I have no special knowledge of that. But I know it's in there, and I know it's waiting, and I know it's promised. And I know that God is a revealer of his written truth. I'm not a prophet. I'm just trying to keep my eye on the ball spiritually and speak about the testimony of Jesus because it's vital. As the scriptures, so much prophetic content, as uh, we've noted many times, Bible is roughly divided into thirds. One third historical, you need what was in order to understand the foundations that go into the timeline of Jesus. And uh, it's about one third doctrinal, that's the right now, what you need to live right now, the manner and way and form by which to live. And then the Bible is one about, it's just general, it's not dogmatic, but it's about one-third prophetic. And that keeps your eyes focused on what is to come in Jesus' name. So there's a divine order to these things. So just follow this outline of Matthew 24, and God will, he'll keep the books. He'll keep the timing of all things as we look for the signs of the times. Amen. Uh, the final answers, those belong to the Almighty to fulfill all righteousness. But I do know this, the, those, those ones who seek him, they're also the ones that find him. I know that. Amen. That's a blessing from on high. If they come the prescribed way, and always, as Revelation 2 and 3 deliver to us, always, the churches are to hear what the Spirit says, because God is speaking, speaks through his word. He will speak for the salvation of his church and the seven uttered thunders of his voice in order to deliver them. And because of the terrible cataclysm of the day, here in our example here, the time frame need, needs to be shortened. But still at the same time, allow time for preparation because we need that. That's the following chapter, Matthew 25, the parable of the wise virgins those were, that were ready, but the, the call came at the midnight, in the middle, of, literally the mid, middle of the night, uh, the midnight cry. It's not meant to just be confined to the hour of what we call 12 midnight, but literally the call comes in the middle of the night at the unexpected hour. They have to rise and they have oil in their lamps and they're prepared. They didn't know the day of his appearing. They didn't know the hour of his coming. But nonetheless, they were prepared. And the way that you get prepared and that you're ready to March out at his command, ready to rise up and meet the challenge, is because you think of these things. You think about the prophetic word. You take it into your spirit, and it makes you ready to move out on God's promise when the call comes. So by waiting and watching and praying, we prepare. Amen. Let's turn to Mark chapter 13. Mark 13. The days need to be shortened. Well, after all, what John Wright about as he inscribed the condition of war in heaven, Revelation chapter 12. Devils cast down, has great wrath, because he knows he has but a short time. Devil's aware of scriptures. That shows in the temptation of Christ following the 40-day fast in the wilderness, quoting the psalm. Cast thyself down, for it is written, out of Psalms 91. He'll give his angels charge over thee. Bear thee up, lest at any time dash thy foot against a stone. Uh, the devil will quote scripture. 
Uh, deception is that much. So the devil has great wrath. He, he knows what's written in the promises of God. But God has a way to fulfill his word the devil doesn't know about. Right. Amen. And that's the strength of his voice. And it will come. So we look for it. We pay heed to it. In order to be ready to hear the voice when it does utter. It takes preparation time to do that, which we're doing right now. So uh, he knows he's only got a short time to overturn the work of the declared prophetic work. It's time and, and timing. Uh, we speak to it often. It has, it's such a key element of things in the victory of the Almighty God. But God's voice will declare it. But just look for it. Praise God. Give him the strength. Yeah. What, he'll, what will he do in return? He'll utter his voice. Yeah. And he'll give us strength to rise up to meet the challenge of the day. That's, that's what we're doing. That's the preparation mode that we're in. So with a sharpened spiritual sense, faith it can and it will be able to meet the test in the signs of the times as we look to what's written. All right, here in Mark 13, which parallels that which is written in Matthew 24. But from Mark 13, we read from verse 3. I better get there. I'm on the wrong page, so I don't want to start on a wrong foot as I'm reading here. It would be Mark chapter 13. Thank the Lord for his word. Amen. Meeting the test is what we always have to do in Jesus' name. And more word, more light, more of his life. That gets the job done. So here we are at Mark 13 and verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew, two teams of brothers, asked him privately, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed lest any man deceive you. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. And it goes on to describe the trials of the earth. There's so many signs in trumpets and, and vials, seals and thunders, but first thing mentioned here is don't be deceived. And I'm going to give the simplest advice. How do you beat deception? It's the Jesus said uh, of the two greatest commandments that these things are written in all the law and all the prophets depend upon these two commandments. God has a way of getting down to the basics of our faith. He's got a way to uh, prescribe his greatness, amen, by the sounding of his voice. Gets down to this, the, and we'll read of it in, in Mark 12. But keep the two commandments to love God and love one another. Now, the surest way that you can ever have to beat deception is to love God and love his people. Amen. It's the greatest armament that you have. With the armaments of our warfare, with faith and with salvation and, and feet shod and, and breastplate of righteousness, all the armaments that we have, they're all, they all come down to those two commandments. <clears throat> Excuse me. For these trials will play themselves out for seven church ages, but the end is not yet, not for that uh, immediate uh, generation there, as, as John, he'll get more explanation on these things upon the Isle of Patmos in Revelation 2 and 3 and, and so forth. But we need something so strong, something so eternal, something so blessedly forceful to beat back the tides of deception because we live in the day of it. Oh my, do we ever. We live in the day of propaganda and mass deception where people will be forced to in part and, uh, but will finally come to the point where they'll follow leaders blindly and it'll just be the blind leading the blind and they'll fall into the ditch. And you have to be aware of that. Deception comes in the form of wisdom. And what's the uh, 
a, mock, a mockery of wisdom, of true wisdom. What's the best way to deceive? Well, act as if you're a bearer of light, which was a, what the devil was created to be. He wasn't created to be the prince of darkness. He was created to be an angel of light. So he comes that way as a bringer of wisdom, just like it from the garden. As the devil appealed to the senses with the appeal of you'll become like gods, knowing good and evil. They had everything good. They had every precious thing. All the trees of the field were good for food, good to sustain, and there was the tree of life, God himself right there in the midst of their presence. They didn't have anything to gain except the evil. So don't partake of that tree. So uh, false wisdom was part of the deceptive work. And as it's written in the scripture, no marvel that the devil himself is transformed into an angel of light. He was created to be that, but made a choice. Made a choice. So deception is w spoken of, and it's written, and it's warned of. But you can beat it. You can beat it in Jesus' name. You can be enlightened with this simple way just to have the, the victory over the enemy, over the beast kingdom, and over the number of his name, hold on to these two commandments. Because a mark's put in the forehead and in the hand. The thought process. The devil wants to govern your thought process so that your hand will do exactly what he wants it to do and that your thoughts will be his thoughts. But if you don't think like the enemy, if you don't think like the devil and you don't do as the enemy, enemy does, you'll never, you'll never be deceived. You'll never fall under the sway of the enemy. You'll never have the mark of his name in your forehead and your hand. God's given you greater thoughts. And to, to if you love God and you love his people, you'll never fall for it. It's just in, in all simplicity. All right, let's turn to Mark chapter 12. I don't care if they strap you down on the gurney and stamp three sixes on your forehead. If you don't think like the devil, and if you don't do what he wants you to do, if you love God and love his people, you'll be there. You'll be able to rise up in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Mark chapter 12, and from verse 29, as we come to the commandments that uphold all else. As Paul once said of these eternal things that were put in place long before he ever came to be, he had a conversion upon the road to Damascus, uh, thanked the Lord and came to a better and more excellent way. And that shows, for behold, I'll show you a more excellent way, as Paul wrote of when, in speaking about Christian charity, of love expressed. And that gets us to the goal. Even if we only know in part what prophecy holds, see through a glass darkly, we know in part, we prophesy in part, God holds the fullness of it all within him. All the mysteries are held within him. As 1 Corinthians 13 says, uh, love is the greatest thing. We have to have that. Everything depends upon it. And here in Mark chapter 12 and from verse 29, we come to this. And Jesus answered him as one of the scribes uh, perceiving of a good answer and asks, which is the first commandment of all? It's a good question. And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. What was it at the beginning of Psalms 29? We give all glory and strength unto the Lord by praise. What do we get back at the closing of the psalm? We get back strength. He gives us strength. He gives us his voice to lift us up. So he'll give you strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, it's so attendant to it. They walk hand in hand. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Your spiritual neighbor, your first responsibility is to people of like faith. And then do unto others as you'd have done to you. That applies across the board to all people. But your first responsibility is your spiritual neighbor. You'll love them as thyself. 
there is none other commandment greater than these. So bless the Lord. Amen. Because that brings life to us. Because God is life. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God, and in the earlier verses of the same chapter, uh, spoke unto those there that were questioning him concerning the resurrection. Uh, when God said, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he's not a God of the dead, he's a God of the living. The, he spoke of them in present, living, tense in that sense oh yeah the body perished but they're alive in jesus name the soul and the spirit this is an eternal word god is the god of the living so amen he's always that so these two commandments so essential it's the basics uh, we speak about it we pray about it everything that we've ever said about prophecy about doctrine it all all depends on these two things it's the spiritual hook. It's the pillars of faith that hold, uphold all other things. And follow that, you'll never be deceived. Not in, not in the ultimate sense. Oh, yeah, you might make mistakes. You might make uh, judgments that aren't, aren't the best in short-term uh, conditions. You know, there's a lot of dangers out there. There's a way that seems right to a man. But the way thereof is, in reality, it's death. But this is the master of life himself, teaching us the way that we should go in all simplicity, to get down to the absolute essentials, to get right down to the basics. Speaking right up to the point to this, where take heed that no man deceive you. Hold on to this. Hold on to it so very tightly. So uh, thank, thank the Lord that his blessings come to us in Jesus' name, because this is where the rubber meets the road, you know, to borrow a modern phrase. This is, and, and Jesus said, said this, by their fruits you shall know them. Those fruits of the Spirit, that's how you know them, not by any other thing, not by knowledge of all mysteries or prophecies or, or anything else that's contained in 1 Corinthians 13. By their fruits you shall know them, and that's love and it's joy and peace and it's long-suffering and it's meekness and temperance. That's how you know. That's how you identify. Amen. By the fruits of the Spirit that God gives. So if you love the Lord and you love his people, you'll never fall for the great lie. You'll never take the mark of the beast or, or worship his image. As the voice of Jesus is the way to defeat and overcome all the deception of the day. Amen. And there's power in that name. Amen. Bless the Lord on high. Let's stand and pray, shall we? Did I preach as long as I should have? It's, I, feel, I feel like it's been five minutes since I started. Amen. Thank the Lord. Cl clock says otherwise. It, that, maybe that's a miracle. <laughs> right there. I, I don't know. But the Lord, Lord's name be praised as we gather together. We're going to sing, I believe. You know what I believe? I believe what you believe. Jesus raised up from the dead. Amen. Miracle stuff's in the name of the Lord. So we're going to sing that. I believe Jesus was raised up from the dead. I believe he's coming back, like he said. Because these things are written. They're affirmed. And when we give God the honor of our praise, how he loves to inhabit your praises. He lives right there. He's not physical. He doesn't depend on space or time or atmosphere or uh, any of those things that it takes to sustain physical life. He lives in the non-material. He lives within your praises. He's right at home there. That's who he is. He's the spirit of truth that we pray to, that we worship in Jesus' name. Amen. As we bow our heads and pray, and Sister Patty and Sister Miriam can play through it as they will. Father, we thank you for your light and your life that brings understanding to us. Lord, strengthen our understanding so that we may have a closer walk with you so that we can follow you for that's what disciples do who follow Thank the you, disciplines that are outlined in scriptures they're followers of jesus so follow me and great blessings come from uh, uh, that such following. So thank you, Lord, for being in us and with us. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for your saving grace. Thank you for your healing, resurrection power. Lord, may it just lift us all up, Father God, remembering those prayer requests for those that are in sorrow, 
those that may be traveling upon the highways, Father, just in the back and forth of coming to church or, or the long distance journey, Father, Lord, just be with each and every one and just let a little bit of your light show within us, yeah. Father, a little bit of resurrection power. You, uh, that'll defeat the enemy. It'll tear down strongholds. And you'll be able to stand in the day of judgment when the towers fall, we'll be standing on the rock, standing upon the rock, Christ Jesus, that always was there, always was there, from ever there was. So, Lord, we just pray that you be amongst us, that we be found within your will, and that we show the love of God and the love of one another. Father, for those are the gifts you've given to us, that we reflect that in our lives. And as we look forward to your coming, we just say, come quickly, Lord Jesus, but yet not according to our will, but thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, glory to God. Glory to God in the highest. I believe. Coming like he said, and I believe that there's a fountain where the healing waters flow. I believe that there is mercy, mercy with the Lord. I believe that Jesus rose up, rose up from the dead, and I believe he's coming back. Coming like he said, and I believe that there's a fountain where the healing waters flow. I believe that there is mercy. Mercy with the Lord, I believe that Jesus rose up, rose up from the dead, and I believe he's coming back, coming like he said, and I believe that there's a fountain where the healing waters flow, I believe that there is mercy, mercy with the Lord, I believe that Jesus rose up, rose up from the dead, and I believe he's coming back. Coming like he said, and I believe that there's a fountain where the healing waters flow. I believe that there is mercy, mercy with the Lord. I believe that Jesus rose up, rose up from the dead, and I believe he's coming back. Coming like he said, and I believe that there's a fountain where the healing waters flow. I believe that there is mercy, mercy with the Lord. In your blue books, page 122, we'll start off with perfect soundness. Thank the Lord. Perfect soundness is promised me that Jesus Christ has set me free. I'll not fail you, thus saith the Lord. Put your trust in my holy word. What must we do to work the works of God? Follow he that's ordained from above, preaching restoration in full power, giving Jesus all glory now. Hallelujah, praise you, Jesus, glory to his name. Hallelujah, praise you, Jesus, glory to his name. Perfect soundness is promised me, since Jesus Christ has set me free. I'll not fail you, thus saith the Lord, put your trust in my holy word. What must we do to work the works of God? Follow he that's ordained from above, preaching restoration in full power, giving Jesus all glory now. Hallelujah, praise you, Jesus, glory to his name. Hallelujah, praise you, 
Jesus, glory to his name. Perfect soundness is promised me. Since Jesus Christ has set me free, I'll not fail you, thus saith the Lord. Put your trust in my holy word. What must we do to work the works of God? Follow he that's ordained from above, preaching restoration in full power, giving Jesus all glory now. Hallelujah, praise you, Jesus, glory to his name. Hallelujah, praise you, Jesus. Glory to His name.